Hello guys and welcome back to part of our journey. As we said in the intro, we knew about the eagle's nest and that we wanted to go there. But we did not know much about the city we had to go to in order to get to the eagle's nest. At this point, we might as well tell you a little bit about how we planned our trip and how we decided on our destinations while interrail Europe for two whole months. So, here we go. At home, we used to have a world map hanging in the living room. And whenever the kids learn about something cool in school or we discovered something interesting like a historical place we would like to learn more about or a beautiful place we wanted to see, we would put a pin right where that place was. Our thought was that if we do this in the year and a half before we leave, we would have an enough pins placed and an easy time figuring out where we wanted to go when the time came. We already knew we were interrailing, so we could drop pins all over Europe as much as we wanted and be free to explore in any order we felt like. One of our family friends asked us before we left if we could send them a list of where we would be and what dates so they could follow us. Well, that is not as easy as it seems. All we knew was that we would fly to Berlin from Norway to start off and that we would leave from Athens to go to Singapore roughly two months later. We had a rough idea of how our world could be and then we changed it around as we saw fit. We rarely know where we're going to be at next week and sometimes even where we will sleep tomorrow. Anyway, we have our world map full of pins and a mission to visit a particular place wherever we go. Anything else is a bonus. For example, Berlin was the Berlin Wall and Prague was the Bone Church. The first pin we placed was the ancient city of Pompeii that was buried by volcanic ash 2000 years ago. Wait till we get to that video, that place is crazy. And another place we knew about that immediately made us put a pin in the map was Hitler's Eagle's Nest in the Bavarian mountains of Germany. After further investigation, we found out its name is actually the Kelstein House, named after the rock it sits upon, and we found out it was not far from Salzburg, which was a beautiful city right across the border into Austria. It's actually Mozart's birthplace as well. There's a bonus for you. And Salzburg is the perfect distance train ride from Prague. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we figure out our route. So, after checking in at the AO hostels in Salzburg, we went on a walk around the beautiful town to have a look, try some ice cream and relax. Because you know, city hopping is quite exhausting and it's important to make time for rest and relaxation so you don't wear out. Because if you're worn out, you're not going to be able to take in all the amazing things that you're actually experiencing while doing a trip like this. Salzburg. Yeah. How is Salzburg? Uh, good. It's beautiful. Yeah. Huh? Very good. There Very is a nice. lot of tourists here, and we're we're one of them. Yeah. But what else is here is beautiful buildings all over the place. This is the Mirabel Castle, and right now we're in the Mirabel Garden, and it is just so nice. And everywhere you look, we're in Salzburg you will see an amazing building. Like if you go behind here, got a nice church. If you go behind me the other way, up on that mountain, nice castle. And that's how this town is. I, I don't understand how anybody could see all the buildings. We're not going to see all of them. We're going to see a cool building tomorrow, the Eagle's Nest, and a few other things. 
But just walking around town today, having a look at this town, and thinking about this is thousands of years of mining salt that gave all these people <laughs> that much money to build all these. Hello, is it good? Yeah. All right. Huh? Uh, other hotel and also there's a uh, Nutella dispenser for to make it go instead of a spoon. Most important question, do they have coffee? Yeah, yeah I think they so. have a coffee machine. Excellent, I'm yeah, going for that. Alright. Break the coffee. I like good coffee. First, I tried this one. It said strong coffee. This is a full cup and it's like stronger than espresso. I rate this one out of 10. And then we had another cup, not so strong. Three at the max. We have to get coffee by walk after this. Yep. We do. Sad coffee story. Where are you going? To get some pancakes. What do we got here? Nutella and mini pancakes. How do you rate this? Pancakes? Probably an 8 out of 10. This? Probably a um, 7. 7 out of 10? Yeah. Which is better, Nutella or Nagatti? Nagatti is like the Norwegian version. And of course it's better. Um, but this together is probably um, eight. Eight. Yeah. Ilva, did you get pancakes? Yeah. Did you get uh, Nutella and honey? Nutella, honey and uh, syrup. Is it? Is it, are they better or worse than your last pancakes that you had in Prague? I don't know. I haven't tasted them yet. So, I'm gonna go from these pancakes to the pancakes. You do that, boy. Those are pretty good, but... Yeah, it's like... It's the same. It's the same. And the honey? Not the same. The honey, this honey is from the Alps. This honey is really good. Nice. You should come build a blanket maker inside a soil. Let's do it. Oh, look at that. We're getting fun now. We're gonna catch it in air. We're in a hurry, but we're fine. We're going to the eagle's nest. Look at these, look at these. All packed up and ready. I'm so excited. <laughs> Just... <laughs> going to the eagle's nest. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm so excited. Me too. We're gonna learn a lot today. <laughs> and we're maybe even gonna but maybe we're gonna swim in the King's Lake. Ooh. I'm not sure, but maybe. Oh, I forgot. Swim in clothes. Yeah, me too. Beautiful station. All right.
we made it to the bus and we got on. We would be visiting the eagle's nest, take a train deep into a salt mine and go and see the beautiful Kings Lake on this day. Little did we know that it was on this bus that we would meet our guide, Walter from Austria. He has been guiding in the era for 50 years or something, and he actually retired like 13 years ago, but he's still going strong, hitting us up with useful information all along wherever we go. He also uses general information as a filler, and he cracks jokes in between that. On this particular day, it was actually Walter's day off, and it was a long day as well, and I'd say that's pretty impressive, and I'd also say that only a guy who likes his job would do something like that. We'd better listen to what he's got to say. Now this particular part of your tour, ladies and gentlemen, timing is of the utmost importance at times. Timing, yes. The road up the hill can only fit one bus at a time, but there's a middle point where they can pass each other. Every time a bus leaves from the top, one also leaves from the bottom. And if you're not on it, it will leave without you, Walter warned us. These were also what Walter told us were specially made buses for this particular tourist attraction. Stronger engines, bigger fans and better brakes. The road has been closed for private vehicles since 1952, since it's just too dangerous. Unless you want to walk up the hill, these buses are the only way to get you to the top. And the ride up the hill was smooth and the view out the window got better and better as we desperately tried to capture some of it on video. Once we got to the end of the road, we left the bus and ventured into a tunnel that led us to the golden elevator that would take us to the Kelstein house itself. The elevator was made really big and with mirrors to make it feel even bigger to soothe Hitler's claustrophobia. He was always worried about the elevator, Walter told us. The Eagle's Nest was paid for by the Nazi party and it was completed in 13 months. 12 workers died during its construction and when I asked Walter how they died, he just answered that two of them died due to a gambling quarrel. Hmm. The elevator is not golden by the way, it's all brass so no need to try to peel off anything. You just take it to the top, it's really fast and then, just like that, we entered the eagle's nest directly from the elevator and were able to walk around taking in the view and the historical significance of the place and it was unreal i couldn't believe i was here and i remember watching band of brothers 20 years ago learning that this place existed and that i would visit it myself one day and today was that day Hey, where are we at? Eagle's Nest. How's the view? Amazing. Good, but I'm afraid of heights. So <laughs> it's kind of scary. Is it? 
masuk After a while of taking in the place, we had time for a time lapse, a few cool selfies, a snack and some coffee before Walter showed us how he once bombed the Kerstein house since the British couldn't do it in the war. <laughs> and then it was back in the elevator, a very impressive place to see and with the added historical aspect of it, the Eagle's Nest is definitely a worthwhile place to visit. down the bus from the eagle's nest what do you think guys uh, good was it good amazing totally amazing fantastic finally I, I can't believe i've been here i've been dreaming about going here for many many years cross it off your bucket list let's go to the salt mine yeah ski lifts in winter when there's enough snow they ski here in summer they play golf down there i hit a 36 year last summer i'm coming back for the second hole next summer there was a pig farm up here What's going on? Um, we're going into the um, to mines and uh, um, mine. and we have to have like those uh, clothes on. Uh, As we went deeper and deeper into the salt mine, we learned that salt had been left inside the mountains by the passing water for thousands of years, and that the method of extracting it now was to drill holes into the salt rock and filling them with water, so that the salt once again could dissolve in water and be pumped up to the surface and become the very salty and tasty table salt from Berchtesgaden. Far into the mountain, we crossed a beautiful mirror lake in a raft and when we came to the other side, we were able to taste the salt brine from a small fountain. It was extremely salty, with a salt content of about 28%. We also saw equipment that was used through the times, how the workers lived and worked before the train, taking the train back to the open air. I have said this many times before, if you have a chance to visit a mine, any mine at all, go do it, you won't regret it. Just like that, we had been on top of a mountain, we had been inside a mountain, and now Barbara and I was walking on a path along the Königsee. The kids took a break and relaxed with some ducks while we wondered if there was time for a refreshing dip in the beautiful Kings Lake. After 
after a long and exciting day with Walter, we headed home for some backpackers dinner at the hostel and got ready to leave the next day. Where to? We weren't actually sure yet. All right, we are leaving Salzburg and it is raining and it's quite cold. And we're going to Italy. To Doggy Beach. To spend some time on a beach. The original plan was going to Paris today, but that's the we changed our mind. bonus of not booking anything before the day before. We changed our mind and today we are going to the beach in Italy. Yeah! And that's gonna be so nice because here in Austria it's raining today. We're wearing shorts and t-shirts, but it's actually kind of getting cold. And that's because fall is approaching and we're leaving it behind. And also, Ooh. it might be a lightning at the camping place. Yeah, that might be. I hope so. But as long as we're on the beach, I really hope. It, uh, it doesn't it, matter. As long as we're in the water, we're gonna die. Rain and lightning today, but five days of sun for the upcoming week. Let's go! But first, a few hours on the train. <laughs> which in Austria isn't all that bad. Thank you so much for watching. We love doing this and appreciate any subscribers wanting to support us and follow our journey through Europe and Asia, visiting places like Venice, Rome, Bosnia, Montenegro, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, and probably a few places we put a pin at that you've never even heard of. We can't wait to show you more. I'm looking forward to see you in the next video.